mites suck. You like that? That's a two for one. No, really, they do. They, they suck. <laughs> <in your life. laughs> they do. They suck the life right out of your plants, man. Uh, yeah, Everybody all sorts group. of mites, right? We had one-eyed cat had got russet mites, hemp mites, hemp russet mites, russet mites, broad mites, a few different names for those little bastards. And uh, also we can touch on uh, spider mites. This isn't an end-all fix-it show, but application methods, what things are you spraying? Are they nasty? What can you use? What should you stay way the hell away from? And of course, Half-Life. Yeah, Half-Life, man. We've got infographics for that. But man, there's... Getting bugs is something pretty common when you when you start growing cannabis. We all make the mistakes of not enough circulation, temperature and humidity getting out of control, too high or too low. All those make it ripe for pathogens. Uh, bugs love to attack weak plants. Uh, so that's what I was going to agree with. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know if I can fully say it's pretty common. I have had spider mites. I have had uh, hemp russets. I have not in my own grow and a grow. Uh, too bad I was consulting on it, root aphids, so definitely over 20 years, but nothing commonplace. After I learned how to grow really well, and we had a panel show, I believe it was with um, Chris Trump and uh, what's his name, Matt, Matt somebody? Matt, Matt Powers. Matt Powers. Yes. But they were talking Power. about that too, man. Healthy plants. Never underestimate having a healthy ass plant. The bugs don't like it. So I can see why newer growers sometimes at times might have more issues if you're not growing healthy plants. But today, um, yeah, let's get into it, man. How, how should we start? I tell you what, man. First off, shout out, man. Do we offer our condolences? We do to uh, One Eye Cat Cannabis because <laughs> I t texted a couple of days ago. We have a group text. Man, I have russet mites. I have hemp russet mites. And those are the tiniest, teeniest, tiniest. Do we have any pictures of those at all, Grambo? Yeah, let's see if we can. Yeah, some, look how tiny right those things are, man. Just little squiggles. I don't even know if you can see them. Can you see them with a regular jeweler's loop? Mm. There, that picture, right yeah. there. They look, they look like little tiny larvae crawling around on your leaves. Wiggles. 60 times magnification. I say 30 times magnification if you're a pro. You know exactly what you're looking right, for. Right. Scroll up to what they look like blown way up. They look like an alien up at the top of this. Yeah. Look at that. That's scary. <laughs> it it's looks like a, like a sea creature, like a crustacean or something. <laughs> Dude, it reminds wow. me of the movie Tremors, those things in the ground. Oh, Good the, yeah. Good you got tremors <laughs> in the garden, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look down, it's every bit as weird as if you look up. That's true. Oh, Anything so. you can imagine. Uh, it's, anyway, man, so I remember back in my day, we just used to get spider mites, all right? Little two-spotted spider mites, man. I don't know what's up with this new stuff. Grandpa, that's great. Can you show that? I don't know. Are we showing that? No, we went and found a spider mite. Yeah, thank you. That's a spider mite right there. Very easy on, on the right-hand side. Very easy to uh, uh, decipher, define. They've got two spots on them, two black spots right on their butt. And that's a two spot of magnified spider mite. quite a bit. You can see spider mites with the naked eye crawling around. Um, you can also tell their telltale little pinhole on your leaves as well. Um, it's right. I wish I should. We need somebody with the OG history because when I would work in the grocery store back, this was in the early 2000s to 2009. And new things would be coming, I think, mainly from the West. Like there's a lot more growers sure. in the valley. And like we were blindsided. By hemp russets, man. And the number one thing, even with Cat, he was down. He, he, you know, he was hurting. He couldn't stay on his spray regimen. And you think that's when they really started to, to flourish. And then you look at new growth and you're like, oh, that's kind of deformed. pH issue. You go right to some of the different things that aren't what the problem is. Um, so, Don't bring them in. Yeah. Don't bring them in. I mean, the first, we're, we're talking about this earlier, and the start of this conversation is don't bring them in. You bring them in from other people's gardens, possibly your clothes, but I really think with these, it, you know, with hemp russet mites, it is bringing them in from infected material. It's somebody gives you a clone. I got gifted two clones a couple weeks ago. I was looking at them, and I was like, I cannot believe I just brought these things right into this room that is thriving right now. It was really dumb, man. Yeah, that's the first thing I asked one. I, I was like, how did you get them? That's like, I, anytime I have something like that, how did you get it so you can start there? Obviously, you have to deal with it. And he's like, I don't know. I think I've always had them, but I was spraying every week. So I kept them at bay until he didn't spray one week because he was down and out. And then everything took off. So they have a quick life. <clears throat> 
man, we were talking about this. We almost, we were having, it was getting heated earlier. And I was like, save it for the show because we were talking about what if somebody calls you up and tells you they have hemp russet mites, man. And it's uh, for me, I say, hey, look, just I would throw in the towel. I would get rid of whatever you got, whatever you've got there and completely start new. Clean your room, bug bomb it twice. Uh, start with new material that, you know, is clean and uh, just start from scratch, man. I mean, it is is that big of a deal for me. I hate having enough fight bugs. It is so much less fun to grow when you're fighting bugs, when you have an infection that you're constantly trying to knock back. If you're winning the fight, though, feels pretty good. No, I don't want to fight, man. All right. I just want to grow with. <laughs> all right. I just want to grow, bro. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about what I say is old school or, you know, uh, we're, we'll get into some modern spray methods and applications. This isn't uh, just a fully informative video on Rossett's but different products out there. When we were uh, back in the day, grocery stores would have, "Hey man, you got any of that good stuff from you know behind the counter? Here's some uh, here's some Floramite, man. It's half life. It's good if you only spray it at this time." I don't think. I mean, there's ignorance on the side of the grower that it, that many people are doing that these days. I hope I'm not out in everybody's grows. I don't see it being promoted as much. Things like Avid Floramite, Mitocides. That's the category, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there, but I mean, it doesn't take a genius, not a genius, but if I'm out there and I don't have the dude grow show and I don't have any, any information and I'm saying, oh, I, I have mites. Well, there's a miticide that we use on our tomatoes that works great called, uh, you know, whatever it is, fluoromite, fluoromite SC. It's bifenzate is the active ingredient. If you go read on the internet and a selective miticide for use on greenhouse tomato varieties greater than one inch and mature. Man, I eat a lot of tomato varieties. I eat a lot of those little cherry tomatoes you buy in a little tin at the store. I'm sorry, a little container at the store. <clears throat> Man, I'm eating a lot of stuff sprayed with fluoromite. It sounds like I just came they to that. say it's good for tomatoes greater than one inch because if you don't grow bigger than that, you're going to be poisoned. Like, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, by the way, when you go and try to find research about this stuff, it's non-existent from the manufacturers. I think I found one thing about fluoromite, which, of course, is safe to be used on tobacco. And uh, yeah, by the way, that was the most messed up thing. They were like, do we know it's safe? And they're like, we don't know it's safe, but we only do short term studies on tobacco because people that smoke so much tobacco do so much other damage to their bodies that it was hard to do studies, long term studies. Uh, but was, and then the worst was they go, hey, because they uh, allow these crazy poisons to be used in other countries, they cited Brazil. They were like our lobbyists uh, lobbied so that we could use them here so that we can compete on a global market. My just because you said that blew up, man. When I heard that, dude, that's let's show just this crop duster South America video, Grandpa. I was watching like the Amazon's craziest pilots last night, and just show this real quick clip. This guy's like, Oh, yeah, I love to, uh, I just work for these different farmers, and each has their own to find some way to of you can mute it, yeah. So they'll show here, right here, just a sec. The, the guy's mixing up, so there it is, gross. there's a special recipe of what they're mixing up to get into the plane to spray on their car. It looks good right there, doesn't that, Scott? Like, it's, it makes me really sad me, because... Me it, and, uh, <clears throat> venom all. They will spray this with people actually working in the fields, and it's just gross. Oh, God. Yes, 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 they just have so little concern for human life some places. That just blew my mind. He's got a mask way. on, don't worry. Yeah, he has a mask on. Yeah, he he does. Does. Uh, yeah. By the way, the mask, you know what you're supposed to use for that stuff? It's like a Not a portable mask, suit. an organic, <laughs> organic phosphate mask, um, man. Like the most shadiest double ventilator respirator thing. Yeah, that stuff I remember when I was doing research. It said, do not smoke cigarettes or go to the bathroom <laughs> after using this stuff. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, right, man. Let's, yes. Let's pull it back. Sorry, I had to show that. That was my YouTube in last night before bed, just laying around watching planes in South America. But um, the deal is, it used to be said, I see you have Half Life explained here. If you spray this stuff early enough in bed, you're good to go. You know? And yeah. You don't really. <laughs> Sorry, I was giving you a, yeah, you are correct, sir. Man. I like it. I like it. I was waiting for the chart. So, I mean, and again, they don't do this, but how does this happen? Oh, is a half-life calculator? 
Oh, it's just easy. I mean, there's a, it's just talking about half-life and you'll just hear people say things that they don't completely understand. Oh man, it's got a 10 day half-life. You'll be fine. That's a lot. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> that means after 30 days, you got 25% of whatever poison was left. Like a half-life of poison? That's scary, you know, because it's like, okay. And then it halves in that half-life. Yeah, it and just, then it halves in that half-life. It just keeps having for a long time. It doesn't just die out eventually. Yes. It halves until it becomes benign. So there's always residual poison, no matter how long you wait. Yes. Especially with our crop, it's only, what, a 90 or 100-day crop, we'll say. If you spray something on there on day 20, it's, there's going to be, you know, it's not enough half-lives, man. There's going to be 25% of that poison still left. Whatever it is, man, That's substantial this. amount. This is where I... I don't like the term. It says it's half-life is most often used in radioactive decay is <laughs> <laughs> no longer harmful to humans. Elements like uranium and plutonium are most often studied with half-life in mind. Yes. You know what the half-lives of those are? It's like 50,000 years or something mm -hmm. ridiculous. I am a, like a grow geek. I have the fog master junior. I don't, this is, could be for foliar feeding. This could be for anything. Um, I love this thing because it plugs in. You know, I'm never going to have to not worry about a battery pack, even though you're like, dude, you're so like 90s or 80s with that comment. But there are uh, other um, on you just search. I think Ryobi has one with like a little battery, like a fogger. But having a fogger on hand gives you such better application and makes whatever product you're spraying go further. So get yourself a fogger, even for a little four by four tent. They're awesome. Agreed, man. That's a huge part of IPM and integrated pest management. I guess you are all you should always be spraying. So things like uh, a fogger, the idea behind that is a really small particle size of the water droplet. If you have a big water droplet, it rolls right off the, you know, right off the oh, leaf. So much more coverage. So yeah. much more coverage. Big money so, on whatever you're spraying. Yes. Yes. All right. You want to take a look uh, at uh, this is yeah, Grandma, well, did you find watch. Yeah, nature's good guys. I just found uh, kind of interesting. They have a bunch of uh, predatory mites and Andersonies, Swirskis, Californicus, but these are all uh, uh, for different types of mites. So some of them work for uh, russet mites. Some of them work better for two spotted. But uh, interesting that there's a whole bunch of predators. At least for for russets, I think there's really only one. I think it's the Andersoni that works the best. Rambo just on dog duty. Yes, he is, man. Coco wants in or out, man. Ricky's good, man. Ricky just chill. I'd rather right be on dog feet, duty man. than dog duty be on me. I was going to just Improv. tell you. Improv. You, Improv. <laughs> the kid, the boy good, like, man. <laughs> women are better with, uh, like, when a baby cries. Like, when my dog whines, like, my one that's younger, just annoying. I'm like, what? Like, what are you whining about? Come on. It's yeah. like, just. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back There's to the no whining. So, uh, um, for the indoor grower, depending on the size of your grow, I just wanted to mention that any, what you're dealing with when you're bringing in predatory mites and whatnot is uh, it's usually more affordable and easier to get a beat down with a spray unless you're somebody that's in a grow that is <laughs> improvising a living soil bed, a ground cover. Um, they always have beneficials in their, their, their regime going on. Maybe they have some host plants, but it can be overkill for just buying a sachet of beneficial bugs for a little two by four tent, if you will. Yeah, but they, <clears throat> that's something where if you have in integrated pest management, you know that you're constantly managing bugs. You've always got in some type of insect pressure. So you, you get on yeah. the subscription program on that and you well, just like keep, that. yeah, you just keep on getting, you know, every couple of weeks or once a month, you just re you keep on re-releasing these bugs. Uh, yeah, oh, no. that's management, sir. I think it was 250 ladybugs into, I think I even ordered those mugs on Amazon. No, I ordered them from the local insectary um, into a two by four tent with six pepper plants in it. They lived in there and they had aphids to eat for a while, but they eventually took care of them for like over six months. They, yeah. they repopulate. There's 250 of them. I'm like, damn, okay. Um, which is pretty cool. I like them. I felt bad though when they escape. I'd have to wrangle them up and get them back to their home. It's terrible out there for them, all right? Yes, exactly. What else did you find? Hey, I actually was looking at Arbico Organics, who they're a really good authority when it comes to uh, beneficial predators. <clears throat> 
They had a whole bunch of stuff called biopesticides. And I was, just thought it was interesting. I didn't really know how to define a biopesticide. You go, biopesticides are certain type of pesticides derived from natural materials as animal, plants, bacteria, and certain minerals. So canola oil and baking soda have pesticidal applications and are considered biopesticides. And it says, as of 2020, there's 390 biopesticides registered. And so it's stuff like mycoinsecticides. That's what the Bacera, Bassiana. What, remember that one that was in Serenade? Those, those are, oh, I thought you were talking about the ones we mentioned on, I think uh, Chris Trump was talking, was it IPMO, Indigenous Micro, where you have. IMOs, oh, okay. IPMO, that's yeah. awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's where you have a fungus that like yep. will grow into the, the bug and take it out and then we'll grow more fungus on that bug when it dies and keep taking them out, which is pretty cool. Yeah, BTI, you know, Bacillus yes, thuringiensis. Do they do studies on smoking that fungus, Scotty? You know what I mean? Some of these products, we got to make sure when are we applying them and is it good to apply it at a certain time? Because that is their biggest lacking point in cannabis is there needs to be more information on what you're actually igniting some <laughs> residue. There's the dude the chiming in. That didn't even occur to me. It's like, dude, there's this cool fungus that poisons everything. It takes them out. It's like, oh, should I smoke that? Oh. Do you know what's covering everything in the world? Yeah. Bacteria and fungus. They're yeah. everywhere. I thought you were going to say sin. Try not to eat them. Just covered in sin. And by the way, they're, they're in your gut too. Yeah. So, yeah. Good luck avoiding them. But I thought it was interesting because there was a bunch of biopesticides, man. We all talk about like BTI and all that. Um, but man, there was some weird stuff. Hang on, I found a couple of weird ones. Let me see, Grambo. What did I find, man? What is PFR 97? I think uh, I is, uh, yeah, look at know, this. Well, I think it's a microbial insecticide. It's if it's there, if Isaria fumosera, a popka strain 97. A popka is a place where they grow a lot of plants in Florida. Uh, but this is, uh, let's see, it's a strain of uh, fungi that infects and kills target pests and mites, including aphids, white flies. I don't know, it's just some new technology. You know, it's OMRI listed. It's pretty cool, some of these things that are going on. Uh, the active ingredient is uh, endopathogenic fungus that infects dead insects as well as some soils. I don't yeah, know. That's pretty interesting. Oh, we've got some shout outs here. In order to really, uh, Lost Coast Plant Therapy, wanted to give a proper shout out, actually. I went out and visited uh, Dirk and Debbie. He's like, I was passing through. He's like, why don't you just come stay at my house? I'm like, that's such a great way. And that came from JR and Rasufa recommending their products. So I love how the DGC comes together. That's what we like to work with people, welcome me into their home. There's some OG growers, Northern Cal embedded in the scene. So like, you are, you are a perfect fit. You got an all-in-one IPM product. So check out lostpostplanttherapy.com, coupon code DUDE. What would your dollars if you're coming to the DGC Cup? Um, we got enough Lost Coast Plant Therapy for a lot of people. I think all the VIP goodie bags for sure and some more. So there we go, Grambo. DGCCup.com, June 1st, baby. This will sell out. We're over half sold out already, Scotty. So I am super stoked. That gives me the budget to have more fun, such as order little smokus focuses for bud display on everybody's. Scotty, when I told him my idea, he, he's like the, a budget guy. There we go. These are not, these weren't the ones I was showing you, Scotty. These are a lot more affordable. These we can display a couple little grams right there on the table with a little magnifying. I think it's. I'm trying to up the uh, the event. What do you got? I spent all the money already on getting these uh, <laughs> these bottle openers 3D printed, man. Sorry. What is that? It's an like HPS light shaped bottle <laughs> opener. Yeah. Deal I can do no wrong with me, all right? Because they gave me a whole case. Of yeah, Scott was like, I don't have any papers. I was like, dude, you're a head shop. Are you, you kidding me? Right. You have a wrap. <laughs> all right. Nice. Well, um, they'll be at the DGC Cup as well coming out to hang. So super stoked for that. And if you're a DGC producer, guys, don't forget to log in. You get 25% off DGC Cup tickets. So if you're coming to the Cup, sign up, support the show, get your tickets. Everybody wins. I'm going to get them up to Tricone T-Bone. Is T-Bone specific to beef or can that be in pork as well? I don't know about a T-Bone pork steak, man. I don't know, sir. Yeah, T Bone. You know who eats T Bones, okay. man? They're just gnawing them raw. <laughs> Game man, Dave. Oh, mm. that's so Dave. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, no. you know how he killed the cow. 
With two arrows, wow. brother. Damn. Two oh, arrows. That's, that's good. You're, you're yeah, doing you know, good. Man. You're keep rolling. <laughs> it was and then steer. they partied with Yogi Bear. And that was a pretty good time as well. <laughs> uh, Yogi Bear. I was hungry Man enough to cow. eat Yogi Bear, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also give it up to Bud Karma. And I'll let you take it from here, Scotty. Wait, did you just bro. say they were eating cannabis cow? Is that what you... Oh, cannabis cow. I get it, sir. Cannabis I get cow. it, man. Cortez the Conqueror, man, coming out to hang out with us for the DGC Cup. That should be a good time. He'll be bringing some of his auto flower weed. You can talk all sorts of shit to him while you smoke his delicious bud. Come on. <laughs> you can tell him how much auto flowers suck yep. while you enjoy his weed. There you go. <laughs> I got J Pen and Captain Chronic. Look yeah. Up. Yeah. I, it wasn't hard when I talked to Scotty about it. I'm like, hey, let's get some really nice jars to display the bud. We got like 75 entries. And you're like, ah, how much are those? And you're like, well, I'm not, I'm not so sure. I'm like, how about I extend the tent another 40 feet? And you're like, that's a good idea. Yeah. So we got a 160 foot long tent, 60 more feet of tent than last year. Come on, guys. It's going to be a good time. DGCCup.com, dudegrows.com forward slash support to get all your deals and discounts, seeds, Sticker pack sent out to new members. Too much to list here. Real growers discounts. You like that? I hit the desk, Scotty. Dogrows.com forward slash support. All right. Hey, can we spend that money on getting Ric Flair over to the event instead, man? I don't think so. That's your idea. I would rather have like uh, fire Mike dancers Tyson. or... Um, Dude, Ric Flair know, shows up with fire dancers. Are you nuts? It's a whole <laughs> thing, man. Be better. Oh, I'll, take, I'll take some ideas. Warehouse Kyle knows a professional hula hooper. I'm like, I guess that'd be cool. Oh, I know, I know that hula hoop girl. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd rather. Oh, she does fire dancing too. Ooh. Oh my god. Full circle. Um, yes. What about a balloon lady? Give us comments, guys. I guess it doesn't have to be a balloon lady. It could be a balloon guy. And that's again a Warehouse Kyle hookup, and says that they know how to do adult balloons as well. That's not just for kids. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. The fact that he said it makes it even more scary, man. So, yeah. Make this balloon disappear. <laughs> Where did it go? I don't know. Check. Uh, yes, sir. I'm down, though. We'll have some We will have some things going down. Uh, so, Turpy10 had a comment. It says, I want to go to the DGC Cup, but I don't want to do three days of driving each way. But maybe next year, I just won't visit. Actually, I'll bring something to compete with. What are some things that DDC should do while they're at the cup or visiting? I mean, Northern Colorado, F4 Collins is an hour out of Denver. There's a college there, Colorado State University. Cannabis culture is pretty strong, no? Wouldn't you say? That's what I'm saying. I think it was a good question. He was like, oh, I don't want to come on out for, you know, drive for days to get out there and go to this event. But what's up? Ricky Bobby was snoring, so I had to wake him up. <laughs> Uh, but man, there's a ton to do in Denver. So, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Even something like Red Rocks, even if you're just going to visit, uh, it's an amazing place. The dispo scene around here is pretty amazing. Going to like a big old dispo and seeing all the crazy products, especially if you're, you're from Prohibition land, definitely crazy and worth it. But what else, guys? There's like some tours uh, in Denver, like a, a, a place that I love called Seed Smith. They do actual tours. You go in, they've got double stacked like warehouse. So it's like one layer of grow and then above it is another layer of grow. Yeah, it's right. Just checking out. I can THC recommended it to me. He's like, dude, you got to see it. It's kind of gnarly. Yeah, and stuff like that. Oh. I think it would be really cool, especially yeah. from Prohibition. Like, Even if you're you not know? into Dispo Weeds, it's fun just to see. Look at them growing. It's cool. Yes, Meow Wolf. I agree. Meow Wolf, I believe, it still has an exhibit in Denver. That's definitely oh, worth yeah. it. You know, I highly suggest. Right on Colfax and I-25. Can't miss it. Ever been to Meow Wolf on weed? Has anyone not? <laughs> I don't know. Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, depending on where you from, like, I just even... Go, Grandma, were you talking? No, Sorry, no. I had some feedback. No, no, no. Okay. Good. The, the, uh, snore. Uh, old Town Fort Collins, for example, that is a very historic old town. It's kind of a cool scene just to walk around. There's good food. There's good people. And you can walk around, swing into a dispo. I don't know what's happening. You tell me. If you were just to rip out a J and you're walking down the street, it, Oko, is that too, too aggressive? We kind of. Somebody, like I've had a cop come and say, hey, don't do that. Don't don't smoke on the street. Like they're not going to arrest you, but they'll shake your people. Yeah, man, we want to. I don't know. Want to make cool. Old Town look beautiful? Huh? It, it, it's it absolutely is, gorgeous. It's this man. little patch of just awesomeness. Yeah, check it out while you're here, guys. Yeah, man. I don't know. Smoking joints stink. You know they really do stink up the area. So if you're in that group right there, and we're <laughs> sitting there smoking a joint, 
that ain't good for business, man. Right. I'd say anywhere people are allowed to smoke cigarettes, then you just got to step off the, the main thoroughfare a couple of feet. You're good to go. Now, Banner has proved you can smoke a one anywhere. Anywhere. Oh, yeah. In I'm the casinos in Colorado, when you go to the cigarette smoking area, they all say no marijuana. No, really? Care. Yeah, it's stupid. You figured they would love like, for you to get yeah, high. Yeah. I think it's the liquor license thing. Are you going to magically get better at math? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, maybe. In my glove box or somewhere around there. But before, I agree. On the one hitter, I can have, I can hit my one hitter, have it back into its case, closed in my pocket before I even exhale. And at that point, you're like, well, what? someone was smoking. Right. Like, it's totally, I love it. I love it. Grandpa, um, did you have that last picture? Did you close that last picture of Old Town yet? No. Look, you see that right there? It's a, a little trivia. Walt Disney designed the, uh, what is what is that town? Is that old town in, in Disney World? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Main Street in Disney World after that spot right there. No after kidding. Old town Fort Collins. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Main you Street. Do historic tours. <laughs> Scotty's gonna I do should. some historic walking tours. I should, man. I should. On how me. far will your, how far will Kenny or Ricky Bobby walk there? I was about to call him Kenny Bobby. Uh, they'll be like, hey, the tour guide seemed exceptionally high, didn't he? <laughs> oh, you should be. What else? You got some comments here? Come on, what do we got? What do we got, sir? Oh yeah, come on, man. Uh, uh, this is, man, we had a uh, banner did the, who did blueberry cannabis? Know your blue, know your blueberry breeder. And it was DJ short and Richie 4352 says blueberry in German is Heidelbeer. It's pretty good, right? Heidelbeer. 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 I like that. Correct us if we're wrong. Pronunciation. Are you sure you got that nailed? Well, do me, how, how do you pronounce this then? Uh, the new hashish pronunciation unlocked, but I don't think so. H-A-S-C-H-I-S-C-H. Hashish. Hashish. Mm. Is that how you say it in German, man? I don't know. Exactly. Hashish. You nailed it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. And you know why I'm bringing this up? Is because we got some listeners in Germany because they just legalized recreational cannabis in Germany. Congrats, Germany. Yeah. Und wer sind sie bitte? Well, did you know that my last name, still currently, as of 2023, has a village in Germany with a population of 50? I think I need to go visit. Say what's up. Ah, uh, that'd be awesome <laughs> if they treat you like a king there. So there's a place called <laughs> Do Germany. But if you're a single man, then do you still have to have those rules? Like that's kind of weird. You're if king. In the town. Yeah, you're the king of the town. Okay. All right. You just walk around yeah. saying what every cool person says, man. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> well, dude's a king, and you're an right. evil genius. <laughs> like you look like him with a cat. Like Real. you're sitting there stroking, like yeah, like Doctor Evil. I found that out. I'm sinister. <laughs> yes. I was listening to a book today, and it said that sinister means left-handed. That's what it really means from back in the well, day, because you didn't know what the guy was doing with his other hand. The There's something hand, wrong with those The left guys. hand pass. Those left handers. In Germany, uh, news, MJ Biz Daily, April 1st, they got some stuff going on. New laws going into effect. Possession of up to 25 grams in public and 50 grams at home. So funny what they that's tell you. Enough. That's, that's, at home. that's, yeah, right. that's um, not enough grams. Excuse me, Grandpa. Oh, I know. Grandpa, get was and trinken. drinking. In Shulagang. Basen Trinken. In Shulagang, my Every uh, single law I see about home grow and plant and possession of grams at home, because the next thing says private cultivation at home for up to three plants, but you can only have 50 grams at home. So it's like, dude, you're automatically screwed. Yeah. Adults will be allowed to grow cannabis in, this is a weird, adults will be allowed to grow cannabis in social clubs together. What the hell does that mean? That was like, okay. That means, yeah, that means somebody's getting rude at <laughs> 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 oh that sucks man sorry members of these social clubs will be entitled of up to 50 grams per month which that's not enough grams <laughs> how many clubs can i join <laughs> you better all the clubs <laughs> it's crazy. Right? Well, 50 grams uh, hang on a second let's be honest that's um almost two grams per day that's not yeah. enough for a lot of people, I but guess. if you write, write, you know, smoke, you know, roll like three or four smaller half gram joints out of it, you should be all right, right? <laughs> should get you through. And his name I is wanted Gro to Winkler. Gro Winkler. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Grambo. I love it. They laugh at your name over there, right? His name is Grambo. Grambo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Gremblitz. <laughs> so I'm like, how is this social club thing going to work? And it says um, the clubs will be subject to strict ruling governing membership, strict rules governing membership, location, and how they operate. For instance, Scotty, the law says a club's members may only be supported in the cultivation process by adults engaged in minor employment by the association. Oh You're calling me? Oh meaning, God. meaning workers at the club earning $581 per month. Euros. Well, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, 538 Jeez. euros. <laughs> so this is really weird sounding. Like, I don't get it. It could be good. At, maybe it's like, dude, I always say I wouldn't mind having some co-ops. Hey, let me grow some right. people and let us sell within the, our own network. Maybe it's good. It seems kind of vague right now, but it's good that they can grow at home. Uh, grow your three plants, Germany. Look at what's happening. I guess if you grow six plants by accident, you're like, I don't know. They just doubled themselves. Or Scott's idea from back in the day: how many? If if there's three plants in one five gal, is that one plant or three plants? <laughs> yeah, right. I just don't get caught, man. There's no. If you're allowed to grow three plants, it's going to be really tough to get them to knock your door down for just because they suspect you're growing six plants or nine plants or 80 plants because how are they going to get a warrant? No, I just, it's I allowed to smell like weed. Research. You're allowed to have just real quick. You're allowed to have weed, you know, plants thrown in your backyard or evidence of growing cannabis. They just have to figure out how much. And that's pretty tough. I agree. And um, also figure out what that is. Is it like for you example, if you got, if somebody comes by Scotty and you have, uh, plants within sight or smell or the neighbors complain it's code enforcement and they tell you to stop that's yes. step one right mm -hmm. you're not like oh shit i'm a felon now so figure out what's next um i am gonna yell i'm not gonna yell i'm gonna say hey guys if you've been enjoying this do subscribe to the channel uh helps grow the show uh, helps us out we really appreciate you listening in and uh, hopefully we've helped you grow so hit that subscribe <coughs> button please i got good okay. advice don't yeah. give the cops any reason to come into your house. Very simple advice, man. You know, but if you I, do I that, agree. you should be able to grow as many plants as you want. We, I've heard stories before. It's very rare. I, but what if your house catches on fire? Shit yeah. happens. Death, I've heard of somebody going through the stress of finding a grow that was completely legit, did not cause the fire. Somebody on the up and up, they weren't just like, you know, gangster in the black market. And then they were having potential issues with the insurance company sure. knowing that there's a grow found there. And like, how stressful is that? Like, oh my God, what if my fire is not covered? Like, anyway, cover your bases. Uh, next article here. It's good for the kids, huh? Smoking miners. I just thought this was interesting. First of all, I like the uh, I like the title, Smoke and Miners. But it says child marijuana use has soared 250% in the last 20 years, replacing alcohol as the drug of choice for under 18s. And just from the headline, I'm going to say good. I would so much rather that my kid is sneaking a little bit of my weed and smoking it than sneaking beers and getting trashed. One, uh, I think you can really learn how to how to use. You know, it's very hard to manage alcohol when you're younger. <laughs> this chart's awesome. It, it defines cannabis as marijuana, and it defines alcohol as ethanol. Ethanol beverage. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, the ethanol beverage we all like. Yeah, but that doesn't account for the biofuels boom, no, does it? Man, man? Easy hippie. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting, and it just... Actually, oh yeah, look, that's a cool chart, isn't it, Grambo? It's just, America's just like wearing a sash of bad. Yeah, but Grambo, just do me a favor. Just, I thank you for scrolling to this. I was going to ask you to help me. Mm. So we were talking about that this isn't the best written article. It's tough. Yeah. Help me understand what the, what the, it means. So you've got medical, yes, fully sir. legal, mixed, <laughs> CBD with THC only, fully illegal, and decriminalized. Wait, what is CBD with THC only? Oh, let's see. Who is what that? that that's a Texas, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois is recreate, or no, that's a it's, Ohio. My bad. I don't understand. Alabama, CBD. Tennessee, Kentucky. Yeah, that one just confused me, sir. Yeah, that's weird. But that's my home state, Iowa. Article. That's those are those boof one percent laws. You got to be kidding me! That's oh, where Iowa is. That's Iowa. You don't know Mimmel the Elf, Minnesota, Iowa, Louisiana. No, just it forms the Elf. No, is that what it is? Really, Mimmel. So I might not have guessed he, that to be Iowa. That's his foot. Here's his hat. Here's his nose. Here's his belly. <laughs> that's Mimmel the Elf. Welcome to the Midwest. Grandpa, click the next link if you would, man. Yes, sir. I'd rather my kid be smoking weed than drinking beer.
come on, this is a pretty good meme, right? <laughs> it says, finally, some children without cell phones. And there's two kids at a football game drinking beer. But they got masks years. on. Yeah. Oh. Safe. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought that was, that was uh, funny. That's wrong. <laughs> when you say kids without cell phones, I had to get together um, this weekend because we have a ping pong table. Like, let's have some friends over, see if they want to pong it up. You know, I'm not that good. Honestly, I'm not that good. People think if you own the table, I've only played on it like three times. I go, oh, shit, it's like, dude's going to be, he's going to be good. Do you somebody, hold your paddle like that? Showed up, <laughs> somebody showed up with a ping pong paddle in a case. Like, <laughs> Screwed it together like the color of money. <laughs> Oh and then God. my neighbor, was <laughs> and his son was there. I'm like, you guys are like professional. And like, I look at his boy who's like 11. I'm like, you know what? They didn't have cell phones back in the day. Like, this is what they do. This is like what we would do with time. And, you know, we're not just so it was just kind of a moment to see like things that you do without uh, the cell phones. That meme reminded me there. Also, one of, I didn't get to mention on that last article, the number one thing they were citing for site said cases. I didn't know what cases meant. I guess either somebody that went to the hospital or had an issue with cannabis as an adolescent was through edibles, of course, you know, because edibles are the most easy to overdo. Probably yeah. the, I'd say with some of the labeling, maybe the most appealing to some younger kids or whoever, but be careful of those edibles, man. Eat 10 and wait a long time. <laughs> Take a few days to gauge it. Don't be like Rambo. <laughs> a, yeah. Learn from my mistakes. It was 10 milligrams. I, I didn't mean 10 edibles. I meant 10 milligrams just to be clarified. Yeah, my father-in-law showed up last weekend. It was my uh, wife's birthday. So I had a birthday party for her. Our family showed up. And he went, his uh, girlfriend is 82 years old and wanted to try edibles. And they all went to the dispensary and got, I asked, I think there were fives or tens. But uh, I was really scared of this, you know, this woman that had never tried cannabis before at all, uh, hanging out and eating edibles. And I will say, now I think about it, uh, I made lasagna last night and she was like, this lasagna was so good. <laughs> and that's all. And now it made me make sense. But uh, yeah, she had eaten like a half of a half or something like that. I gave her the dude's rule, you know. I like it. Yeah, half of a half. But it no. depends on how many it is. I'm comfortable with almost anybody trying, and it can affect people harder than not. At ten milligrams, you know, when you say, "Hey, try five or two point five, right? It's on the pretty damn low end. I want them to feel something, right? Yeah. Um, but that's my with my mother in law. When you have accountability and you have to continue to be in that relationship, I'm like, you should try two point five. You know, let's go from there. Make sure all yeah. is well. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get any phone call that she freaked out this morning, so I guess it worked out. Today's show is brought to you by Real Growers Grow Dots. Stop stressing about mixing and measuring nutrients and stop worrying about nutrient burn or nutrient deficiencies. Try feeding your plants with Grow Dots instead. And don't take my word for it. John Sin says, absolutely amazing product, simple to use. Just mix in pot and water. John says, I've tried several other newts, but these take the cake for sure. Recommended a thousand times over, great for novice growers. Thank you, John. So if you're looking for the easiest way to feed your plants, check out Grow Dots. You mix them in once, right at the beginning of your grow cycle, and they keep your plants fed all the way to harvest. See what other growers are saying about them over at growdots.com. Come on, I got a couple of comments here. Uh, Dude, DGC Worldwide, dude, no okay? Joke. No joke. And Godspeed to King VB, who says, much love from the Ukraine. Going and smoking and watching Prohibition nice. fall down. Wow. Yeah, man, we have growers in the Ukraine. That is freaking cool. And we get a really uh, a lot of news about the Ukraine, and it seems pretty crazy what's going on there. I can't man. imagine they're so worried about getting you, busted. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just grow up, Ukraine. I, I wish you all the, all, all the good living in the world, man. And uh, by the way, I saw this on Facebook. Just click on this, man. This is a highway in Ukraine. Oh, no, oh my God. Oh, it's like, what? I, yeah, I guess they're avoiding missiles or, or radar yeah, right? or something. Yeah. They're man, going low under radar. Most they're likely. like, try to fly low to the ground if you can. Oh okay. My God. <laughs> I mean, What's the clearance on helicopters on the highway? Know. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Guy, that guy is like, I am not getting shot down. The guy behind him is like, I'm not going that low. <laughs> is there audio? <laughs> yeah. I may get shot. I'm just not going to go down. <laughs> you know, I'm already at the ground. Wow, that's Crazy. insane, right? Yeah, that's insane. Wow. We got Fat Kid 
It says, how do you guys not know what micro seeds are? <laughs> so micro seed, I don't know. What do we mention micro seed? We did. And by the way, I just did this one because it says, how do you guys not know what micro seeds are? Bah! 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 <laughs> bah. I didn't do yeah. that. Yeah, that's generational there. Okay, man. <laughs> but the micro, yeah, those little freaking, what are they, like, nan- nanners. Yeah. Nanners. I was talking like preemie seeds. I couldn't like remember the dang word for it, Pre- man. Premature. Then we call them nanners, okay? So, bah! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Very good. You take the next one. Yes, this is official Doobie Danny. Uh, And this is a great point. Thank you. I love how YouTube advertises cannabis gummies, but bans cannabis channels. Certain cannabis Hmm. channels. Certain. I need the Drake meme for that. (laughs) Yes. Hey, I got one more. What is the move there, though? Quickly, I was just yes, on. I th- maybe it's just on Facebook where people throw up ads to see how fa- how long they can get away with it before it's reported. Because like, I have ads directly selling me mushrooms, weed on Facebook. Yeah. And I'm like, no way. This is like, I guess it's just how it works. It's not like they're ad supported. It's really strange. No, if you give them your credit card, they'll send you the stuff. YouTube's been uh, sending me ads that is Mr. Beast deep faked his uh, fake voice advertising right. some like Sudoku game. It's it's hilarious. It's like, dude, how is this here? It's an obvious deep fake. It's there every you lost week. Me at Mr. Beast. Nah. Who's Mr. Beast? Uh, Jimmy uh, Donaldson, you know. the biggest YouTuber on earth. Hey, I have to give a shout out, man. And this is <clears throat> first off, test nugs. Uh, this is regarding the algorithm controlling us. Remember, we were talking about that a couple shows back. Yeah. 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 Well, he says it's not controlling you. It already happened. It already happened, okay? It's already so controlling it's already, you. It's already controlling you, man. It's yeah, already okay. been. It's, yes. Anyway. Ma- Matrix it, has happened. It's no, no, no fighting back at this point. What's done is done. I need it, though, okay? And I'm going to give you an example. I've been talking up the different strains, the emergency and uh, uh, the cherry reel. And I talk about this guava gator. It's a loving on her eye strain. And I never give credit to Joof. This is the Joof cut of guava gator. It is beautiful. It is as badass as as the uh, cherry Paloma JR's cut. Like, there is a difference when someone selects a pheno. And I just... I don't like space, man. I wasn't giving them the credit. And then so I walked, I had harvested some cannabis. I was just looking at it. Me and Kenny were talking about the guava gator. And then I walked in and my Google picture frame shows a picture of me and Joof. Like right when I walked by it. And I'm like, dude. You like that. You kind of like that though, don't you? Like I would have felt like a jerk. I'm glad that I'm able to give Joof his credit. You know, I would have felt like a jerk if I'd completely spaced on it. Uh, yeah, it had my back, man. So Big Brother is looking out for my us. My Google Picture Frame's got my back, Thanks, all right? Big Brother. Shout Thanks, out to Google Juice. Picture Frame. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how, you know, you can shut everything off to a degree, but how some people are like, no, man, there's no way. Like, if it's doing that, Scotty, what else is it doing? And it's like, how much my brain. do you know about you? And it's like, dude. If you go through and like just the other day, I forgot what I was doing. I'm like, man, should I have a VPN for this? And it wasn't anything too sketchy. But it's like, I don't know, man. How it, if you're somebody that's doing stuff that you're worried about getting caught for something? I guess sure, but otherwise, it's super hard to prevent whatever said tracking, your IP address, all that jazz, and not live paranoid, if you will, at this point in the game. Well, we're so addicted to the information, wouldn't be that hard. You can just throw your cell phone out. But we're so addicted <laughs> to that information, you know what I mean? We can't. Where's right. the line? It's simple as I look at the weather on my phone multiple times a day, and when it says it's nice enough to go mountain biking, I am rewarded for picking up the phone and looking at that. It's like, oh, little reward. Yeah, I hear them. I hear you. Lives Let's a lot move better. on. I'm tell uh, y'all if you're coming out. I know I'm pushing this hard, but if you're coming to the DDC Club, you better be looking fresh. You want to go to dudegrows.com forward slash merch. Get yourself a badass hat. I don't know what's left on the hoodies. We'll double check. We do have hoodies in, but you're probably not wearing that in Colorado in June. But there's some nice DDC hoodies up there, a grow journal, the lighter bundle. Well, if you're coming to the cup, you already get the lighter bundle. Everybody come and gets a lighter and a DGC one hit. But you can get one over at dudegrows.com forward slash merch. Pins, patches, nice homemade rolling tray by DGC. Uh, and yeah, 
Check it all out, guys. Newgrows.com forward slash merch. You producers get a coupon code for any of that merch. Log in and check that post for producer discounts. Um, and yeah, Ricky Bobby is turning into our mascot today. I got a snoring dog on my hands here, man. I got a snoring dog. So we'll see if we can keep him. Uh, his breathing pathway is clear for a little bit. Let's see. All right. I like it. I like it. <laughs> What else do we have uh, news here? Oh, I have one more discussion point from a comment from More Bud Angel. Yeah. Says, uh, Grambo Jackson <laughs> is my contribution for today's show. And I didn't know what the hell this meant because I wasn't like the sports guy, but you can elaborate. A Bo Jackson. Grambo knows football. Bo Grambo knows. It took me a while, too. It's like, oh, Bo Jackson. Yeah, Grambo you Jackson. have to be old, dude. You have yeah. to be old to get that. All right. Bo Jackson, baseball or football? Both, remember? Oh, look at that, man. Yeah, yeah he played NFL and uh, MLB. When going both ways meant something different. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Like Michael Jordan almost did that, but didn't. Yeah. Okay. yeah no, some That's a fun conspiracy. Look it up. I'm not, I'm not going into it. Just look it up. <laughs> Michael Jordan never was on the moon, was he, man? <laughs> that whole thing was made up, right? He might have had a little gambling thing in the NBA and been banned, and there's hey, a deal. It's a fun yay, conspiracy. Yay. <laughs> I guess under the news, Scotty. What? <laughs> I just got one. I don't think it's really news, but I had a bunch of friends over last week and family for my wife's birthday. And uh, one of her friends came over and she's like, dude, you need to grind. You know, I have epilepsy. Of course, everyone wants to help. You need to get grounded bed sheets. <laughs> what? Like, sorry. Yeah, you need to ground your bed sheets, man. You know, and I'm like, eh, it sounds like BS. And I just started, it sounded really hokey. And she's a friend enough where I started laughing. Like, you remind me of like forest bathing and forest grounding, you know? Well, how do you and ground the bed sheets? I don't, it was, I don't know. I couldn't figure anything out, but it got me Googling grounding where I was like, you know what? You're not totally wrong on. Uh, that what do they call forest grounding, right? Where you uh, go barefoot and touch the earth with your bare feet. Have you heard about that? Yeah, totally, bro. You got to do your grounding sessions. You know, <laughs> I bet you there's a club for it out where you're at, bro. Oh, the I'm BC sure grounding a YouTube video that we can get an app for it. Maybe I like it though. I do agree. It is. It, it there is. If you haven't done it, granted, don't do it where you're going to hurt your feet. But running around in the woods, barefoot, the beach, wherever. Like, it's nice. It's nice. You're up, it's just another element to you. It doesn't sound that dumb once you think about it. Like, I was looking up at the moon. There was a full moon a couple nights ago. I'm like, dude, that moon is being pulled around, you know, through the gravitational pull of the Earth. And that's what, however many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of miles away. The fact that we're standing on the thing that's got a gravitational field or a magnetic field enough to pull that moon. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy. It you know? lifts, lifts the oceans. That's what the tide is. It's crazy. Yeah. So I'm saying the fact that we're going to ignore that there might be some kind of. You know, when the, our, the Earth has an electronic field. You know, it has a, if you put. Uh, a, a meter that measures electricity. There is a weak voltage that comes out of uh, out of the Earth. It's, a, it's actually a huge movement right now. That I think the science proves that there is some uh, stimulation through your body. They sell these oh, yeah. not sheets but mats that generate electric fields in your house. See, I don't know about that. Just, I, I can't believe you Huberman. didn't throw up some links. I just YouTube Huberman. first ones. Yeah, Huberman. We got benefits <laughs> of ground. We got a whole movie, the Earthing movie. It's 115 minutes long. Really? I gotta get check this out. Yeah. Wait, Huberman's in on it? <laughs> Grandpa loves, loves Huberman. I, lo I love Huberman. <laughs> he loves Huberman. He's Huberman. too smart for me, man. Just neck. He's so smart. He's neck. Yeah. I was like, just more, more coming on Earthing. Let's go, guys. It's basically, yeah. Earth, I think. Hey, do me a favor. I did clip. I was like looking to disprove it. And yeah, here you go. The effects of grounding. This is from the National Library of Medicine, yeah. from the National Center for Bio. Uh, technology information. I hope that's real, <clears throat> but the effect of the effects of grounding on inflammation, the immune response, wound healing, and prevention and treatment of chronic inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. That's what they studied. And if you scroll down, if you would, Grambo, to what they what they the conclusion, if you would, they were doing seeing if wounds healed faster if you were touching the earth. Oh, that's 
crazy. Oh, there's your sheets. There's your grounding sheets. Damn it, man. So I want to make plug, one of this I shit. Actually, I was going to say, I was like, do they plug into the grounded socket of the wall? That seems scary. They do. Every Dude. part of this sounds like BS except for the name of where it's on. So scroll, because it's from National Institute of Health. Go to conclusion if you would. Wait. Yes, are you, sir. Are you, I'll let you go to conclusion first if you'd like. And then I, have a I can't find it yet, but it says that it works. Long article. They're not playing I think games, it might are be. they? <laughs> and I'll find it. You go there and I'll find it. Is. Conclusion. Yes, it says... Uh, Acclimating. It said it worked, damn it, all right? <laughs> it said it worked. I can't read all this stuff right now, but it was like, yeah, it worked. They saw they saw um, uh, uh, faster wound healing. And I was like, what? So and yeah, and this is legit. Said, uh, anytime you guys want to check it, if you see PubMed as one of the publishers of it, it's one of the most respective journals on earth and medicine. So PubMed, verified. <laughs> I, was, I was like, okay. Can't make fun of my wife. I like how you say anymore. that. Knowing the sources, this is something like when you said, oh, this is from the National Institute of Health. It's from the National Library of Medicine, which then goes on to say National Center for Biotechnology Information. And we all know sometimes these type of organizations name themselves as sophisticated or smarter sounding as possible. Just like, oh, yeah, this is that sounds this is, legit. This is NIH.gov. Oh, OK. Yeah. That one. <clears throat> that, hey, the, regardless, when hey, and I found it, ready? Benefit? Summaries to findings to date. Uh, grounding appears to improve sleep, normalize the day, night control rhythm, reduce pain, reduce stress, shift the automatic nervous system from sympathetic towards parasympathetic activation, mm. increasing heart rate variability, speed, wound healing, and reduce blood viscosity. Wow. A summer, summary has been published in the Journal of Environmental, Environmental and Public Health, which is owned by the National Enquirer, by the way. <laughs> Now, what do we have to stand on, though? If I go out, the for ground. example, and <laughs> my street's made of asphalt, I presume that doesn't count. My driveway is gravel. Does that count? Do, if I'm standing in the woods on composted forest material versus the grass in my front yard versus sand at the beach, like what's the best conductor here? We need more information. We Maybe do. Watch the movie. We do, sir. And you better get your sheets plugged in soon. Scott, you hear about it. <laughs> How funny that that article would cite that random thing. That was very cool. Can't stand the fact that that girl was right, okay? <laughs> nah, I just thought it was interesting stuff, man. This one here, culture. Um, we got Nevada's, Nevada's first marijuana lounge opening with top lawmaker hitting a joint at four. That was uh-huh. cool. the, 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 the guy. Uh, you can see the picture of. Uh, Tick, see? Like a, oh. Hang on, you're breaking up, dude. But hang, wow. Let me see this. Scro- just scroll down really quick, man. Did they really have a... There he is. <laughs> That's awesome. Is that Joe Rogan? <laughs> uh, can you hear me okay? Am I yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. That is so Vegas. Just, is there <laughs> anything more Vegas than that picture right there? <laughs> The cool thing is they're going to allow to purchase and consume there. They're going to have food and drinks there, not alcohol. But um, I think that, I mean, this is something I would go to. I think this is something. Click on the Instagram picture uh, right below this link, Rambo. It's just like a nice little hang lounge. And they're saying, hey, we're going to be the Amsterdam of Nevada. And when I guess, I don't know why Amsterdam has taken recently a pretty negative view, maybe on saying we don't want the cough stuff, probably because so much other things such as prostitution there's a lot of dealers there i think for tourism in nevada um and we should have this model there it's just a nice little lounge we could go hang there yeah grandma let me see your new girlfriend again <laughs> she's ai <laughs> <laughs> no the girl the girl the bartender man that's your type that, uh, oh, that's oh, your type oh, right women there are my okay? type. come on Oh, the tattooed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going out on Saturday. Yeah, Grambo is single, by the way. Yeah, officially. Ma'am. DGC Cup I mean, tickets available. <laughs> Come see me. I love it. Vegas is too weird for me, man. Just too weird for me. Like a lot of other places, it's going to be nice to see more cannabis consumption happening instead of just, you know, purely alcohol fueled craziness, which is not all crazy, but I like it. Let's get some more weed up in there. Yes. Hold up, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Let me put some weed in it. it. Thank you very much. I'm going to shout out here, man. I want to shout out to a few more. We got some lady producers. I think uh, we got JR grouping them together here because we got what's up, Sunny and Bechtopia, Blue Kiss Gardens, and Grow Mom. How's it going, Grow Ladies? Who you got, Scotty? 
All right, Trey K, hope to see you again at the DGC Cup this year. And OC Deb. All right, what's up? JR, I don't know. Yeah. Will JR bring OC Deb down with them? Somebody's got him. Somebody's uh, got to watch the grow, huh? <laughs> Twogrows.com forward slash support, guys. That'll hook you up. Scotty's looking up 30% off real gross products. Win win. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Could be sushi dinner too, if you'd like. But uh, you can hook it up there, man. If you're growing the dank, come support the show. Take it out, hit it up. We got uh, pros. Lastly, pros, guys. If you're shopping for your grow, dogrows.com forward slash pros. Everybody's listed over there that we work with, that we trust in the industry, that has great products that are DDC vetted with coupon codes. So go over there and shop your grow, get an upgrade. Every time I say upgrade, is it weird how one movie can damage your brain? <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, I know the exact word you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I only think of idiocracy. And it's like, how do they damage me like that? I don't mind it because it reminds me of a funny movie. But same thing with if anyway. someone says, I'm not sure. It's just like, oh, yeah, right. Damn, totally. Damn. Is there a better exactly. movie than idiocracy? I don't know. I mean, it's A plus, right? It's A plus content. Judge, uh, Mike Judge is one Certain of the Certain words, goals. man. What do you think of when you say bummer? I mean, that's bummer. I said bummer, man. Maybe it's a, like, bummer, bummer, man. Bummer, a bummer, dude. A bummer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, make us laugh, Scotty. What did you get in some memes, social media? Here you go, man. Here you go. You see my new floor mat? <laughs> what do you do if you show up and come back with a warrant? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they would come back with a warrant. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. It's pretty cool floor mat, right? Yes, I guess tell so, me. but very bad idea. Don't incriminate yourself, as you said earlier in the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. tell me you're shady without telling me you're shady, right? <laughs> hey, this is shady. Give me a favor. This is the favor flavor farm. And I just want to see, can we look at dude's face as we play this? This is like some kind of flavor, flavor infuser for cannabis. And you put your flowers in the in there, and then you put your flavors in there. And it's like a soda. Oh, no, that's the electronics. It's got like terpene jars on the side there. I don't, hopefully, we'll show them in a little bit. That's all the electronics. And it just, I guess, flavorizes your cannabis for it sale says, at the your local store. Infused. Oh, man. That Not- just... No. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it at all, man. Like it, it is so creepy. Just in the description, used. it says t- yours infused, not sprayed. I guess some people just spray terpenes. Oh, is man. that what's going on? I totally. You know how much weeds out there, dude? They're like, what's the big deal? They're natural botanical terps, bro. Why not add some blueberry back to the blueberry? It freaks me out. I mean, it freaks me out. <laughs> I like the way they are like, don't be fooled by the other <laughs> you creeps. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Join us. Right. Uh, we use foggers, man. Ooh. Yeah. Fogmaster Daddy. <laughs> right. That's it, man. That's it. Hey, can I just shout out to one of my favorite comedians, man? So somebody that always made me laugh. Grambo, were you a big Bill Murray fan back oh, in the man, day? I'm a. OG Ghostbusters head. Yeah, he was just hilarious. And I think when I was 10 years old, I seen Caddyshack and he's mm. just, uh, yeah, it's just a fan. That's him and that's Lil Wayne. Is that right? Lil Wayne? Mm, maybe. I haven't uh, listened to any, any. I need to get into some of the new rap. Like Kodak Black just got out on bail, man. You know oh, what I mean? Shit. Yeah, I should listen to more of his shit, you know? <laughs> just celebrate him, you know? Holla. Uh, I'm from Broward County, Florida. Murray. It's Kodak Black. Oh. <laughs> Ricky Bobby. <laughs> no. Sure, know, sure. Blame the dog. Like, you know, that it might be a propane leak. Just enjoy around, those man. dog terps, Scotty. If if I had propane uh, <laughs> if I had propane uh, CO2 going on in there, I, I would stop the show and be like, I think there's a gas leak right now, bro. I gotta go check, man. That's good news. Oh, oh, going with what about Bob? That's all. That's awesome. Awesome. Or that one. I still say I'm starving Dr. Leo Marvin. Uh, People used to say I'm starving Marvin. I always went, I'm starving Dr. Leo Marvin. They're all good, man. Mm-hmm. They're all good. Stripes. Uh, don't even make me say meatballs, all right? I was 10 years old. Met something to me, all right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, on, last, uh, just uh, some parting thoughts, some, some deep thoughts from Scotty Real is... Dude, a mentor, okay? Have you have you ever been mentored or mentor somebody? It doesn't have to be really official, but just helping somebody out, showing somebody the ropes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is a, this is a Instagram, and it says, watch what happens when you work with a mentor. And this does say it all. 
Look, it's a guy like, surfing. At a, I think they're at a wave pool, maybe. They are, but he's showing the kid how to do it. You could tell the kid 50 times, the next time you go out there, do this and do uh, that. Or you can have somebody oh. go pull you up by the hips and show you. And yeah. all of a sudden, that kid my brain from- is. My brain is ruined because, like, I'm, I watch sometimes ridiculousness. I'm just waiting for somebody to eat crap, like the old man to like fall off. <laughs> Grand brother, you tell cool me this sure. is AI. Same with growing man. man. No, I'm in. I love. I want to meet this guy. I want him to be my mentor. This is the big Kahuna right here, bro. Yeah, but it's, it really does. Look at he's just on his. He's so ca- He's so good at surfing that he's just casually on his knees, ripping away. That's sick. So the, uh, I agree. Just like a grow mentor, man. We say in the show, if you have somebody that can mentor at growing, give you a cut that they've grew without mites, without any mites on it. Huh. And, uh, yeah, get you going with directions. It's a really good way to succeed and feel cool. Oh, right on, right on. I thought that was I'm a cool message. End. Yes, sir. Definitely right. a cool message, guys. Thank you, Grambo. Scotty, you can still hit that subscribe button. Stay higher out there. We'll be coming at you. Don't forget, hang with us Saturday morning, man. You know, chain, chill, check out the comics. Nobody does that anymore, though, I don't think. Oh, well, I'll do it, all right? I'll start a new trend. I'm bringing the comments back, dude. I am old enough. The comics. Yeah, comics. Like, I'm old enough to, like, be like, did you ever just, you'd get the, was it the Sunday or the Saturday edition of the page? And then you had the comics. Yeah, the funny. the bigger section. How old are you again? Yeah, the the family Circus yeah. was your favorite. Oh, come on. No, Spider-Man. No. Spider-Man was the only good one in there, all right? Calvin and Hobbs, bro. Hey, I like it. Oh, all right. Take her easy, guys. Peace out. Stay higher. Hey, take her easy, dude.